Hi, my name is James O, and I am going to talk about CSS modules in React and Webpack. Uh, so I will cover what are CSS modules and why should they be considered. Then I'll go through some sample code from a really simple, simple implementation in Juke. And lastly, whether CSS modules is a way of the future and how it could impact us as developers. I'd like to start with a joke. Uh, two CSS properties walk into a bar. What happens next? Any takers? Dave knows this? No, OK. A bar stool in a, a, bar stool in a different bar <laughs> falls over. This was tweeted by Thomas Fuchs, who's a JavaScript developer who's written a bunch of libraries. Um, and he's got a lot of other uh, good jokes on his tweet, uh, on his Twitter. Uh, so, so there are lots of things that people love about CSS, right? like being able to make changes globally uh, down the cascade with just a few code changes. Um, like it's great you could have this master style sheet that could govern the design of your entire app. Um, and people like that it's easy to write relative to other programming languages. But on the flip side, there are some pain points, right, for the same reasons. Uh, because of the global namespace, you can run into naming collisions. For example, it's easy to accidentally, accidentally declare the class names that have already been defined. And because it's easy to write, it can become a uh, pain to maintain. If there's a small design change, you're really tempted to just add those few lines of CSS instead of going back um, and parsing through and, and taking out the stuff that shouldn't be there to get to that goal. So your unused code base can grow over time. So the developer community has tried to solve these issues through various approaches uh, with frameworks and principles and guidelines like object-oriented CSS, uh, BEM, uh, suits, and smacks. These approaches bring the missing structure to CSS, but require a lot of mental overhead. Uh, you need to remember all the implement implementation details to use specific naming con conventions, and your front end code can get verbose, and no one likes having to write double underscores um, and triple hyf hyphens in your code, right? Now, as the web becomes more, uh, built more and more with, with components and less with static documents, are there tools that work better with our tool set, like React and Webpack? while solving these issues of global namespace and code maintenance. So this is where CSS modules comes in. So what is a CSS module? It is a CSS file in which all class names and animation names are scoped locally by default. What does that mean? It allows you to write scoped CSS kind of like function scoped variables in JavaScript. So what does it do? Let's say we have a React component. CSS modules gives you the ability to import CSS files into your component and reference individual CSS classes. In this example, a CSS module containing the logo class is being passed as an object to this, uh, as styles.logo to this component's render, render method. And if you looked at the source HTML, uh, you'd see that the class name logo is prefixed with a component name and suffixed with a hash that's determined by the contents in this class. So it's guaranteed that each CSS class declaration is unique. So this also means that you or another team member can use the same class names in different CSS files and not run into any naming name collisions or step on each other's toes. Pretty cool. Uh, so next I'd like to show you how I did a simple implementation in Juke. The first step is to install two NPM packages, CSS Loader and Style Loader. If you guys can remember, Webpack loaders are really just functions that take an input uh, and give an output. A loader that we're already using, um, which is kind of collapsed here, just for the sake of space, is the Babel loader to transpile our JSX. A CSS loader parses CSS files and applies various transformations to it. Uh, and the style loader injects the styles into the DOM head. Here, I added both style loader and CSS loader in just a couple lines using uh, the loader chaining notation, which is deconstructed here for better readability. Um, and you can customize the local class that gets generated by modifying the local identifier name, which means that you can kind of get um, the naming conventions like BEM for, for free. The second step was to divide the CSS in the public directory into their appropriate components and move them into the React directory to make them accessible to the components. And it's recommended that you name them after their corresponding components. The last step was to import and refactor. In this sidebar component on line 11, 
I am local scoping the logo class. And on line 13, I'm also local scoping the menu item class, but I had to use bracket notation because it contained a hyphen. So this is why the documentation recommends that you use camel case for CSS classes. But I tried to see how far I could get without making any changes to CSS code. Uh, things started to get kind of annoying when I wanted class name to use both local and global classes. Here on line 46, assuming playlist item is local and menu item is a global bootstrap class, you see that you have to interpolate the JSX. So mixing CSS modules and global CSS classes is cumbersome. There's got to be a better way, right? So this is where React CSS module comes in. So React CSS modules addresses this by leveraging the existing CSS modules implementation. And according to the docs, it provides seamless mapping of class names to CSS modules inside of React components. So how does this work? It lets you use style name instead of class name for local CSS classes. So in using this, you don't have to use the camel case name convention. And because you use style name, there's a clear distinction between global uh, CSS and CSS modules. So going back to the sidebar example, after I implemented React CSS modules, I was able to get rid of the, the weird interpolation by separating out the local playlist item class out of class name to style name. One thing I'd like to mention is that if you're deploying to production, you should use this plugin called Extract Text Webpack Plugin to compile your, compile your CSS modules into a, C, a single CSS file. Um, because Webpack Style Loader loads an internal style sheet for every import, uh, which is great for development, but isn't a best practice for production. Uh, this demo code is available on GitHub, and I've made a commit for each implementation step. And finally, is CSS modules the way of the future? Um, I feel like it's improved my own development experience, so I plan to use it. Um, here are the benefits. Faster development. You don't have to think about global scope as you work, which leads to less fear of change. You know that a file only affects the file that imports it, which means everything is maintainable by default. You write a style sheet, import it into a component, and clearly understand that relationship, and those relationships can be maintained over time. And you also have faster debugging because you can configure your CSS loader to generate class names that follow certain naming conventions and simpler onboarding. As new developers come on board, the onboarding process is a lot simpler because the CSS is often the hardest thing to come up to speed to. But the coolest thing is, the coolest part of all this is that it's allowed much easier style guide extraction because for every JS file, you have a matching CSS file which makes up a component. And you add more and more components until you eventually have an app boundary. What if you want to spit up more apps on the same stack? A lot of these components will be common components that aren't restricted to just one code base. So it suddenly becomes easier to spin up a style guide and extract the common components to build your new apps. Thank you. <laughs>